What's up guys, how you all doing? Adam here and I am back for another video. Yes, another video. And in this video, I'm gonna chat to you guys a little bit about my kinda new desk setup that I've got behind me over here. Now, I'm gonna do a more comprehensive one which is gonna go through everything in precise detail, but loads of people have been asking me for what the new specs are on my Mac Pro because I've done a little bit of switching up in the name of CPUs and GPUs. So I'm gonna run through that and I'm just gonna give you a really quick breakdown of what I've got set up and then you guys can let me know if you wanna see a more kind of in-depth one which I'll do at a later date. So, first of all, the screens have stayed the same. They are Dell 4K HDR screens. I'll leave an exact model down in the video description because I'm not sure exactly what they are. In addition to that, I've also got the 2019 Mac Pro down in the corner. I've got some QNAP Thunderbolt 3 stroke 10 gig networked NAS devices in my storage cupboard over here. And then in addition to that, I've also got my Blackjet card reader, which I did a video on a couple of days ago. And then I've got two CalDigit T4s, both 32 terabytes each which just runs standard SATA drives, but again, they're Thunderbolt 3, so they're very, very fast, directly attached storage. So let me go through in a little bit more detail the specs now of my Mac Pro. It's completely finished now. I'm not gonna be upgrading it anymore, touch wood, for the not too distant future. And the specs that I've now got are this. So I originally started off with the eight core, and the reason I did that and I didn't buy it from Apple, because there's not that much of a difference between buying it from Apple and uh, buying it for yourself and then fitting it is because I've got a use for this 8-core Xeon. So the new CPU that I've got inside the Mac Pro now is a 16-core 32-thread Xeon processor. Again, I'll leave a link to the exact name down in the video description. But the reason I went for the 16-core was because when you work out the value for money, all the way across the range. To me, it just seemed about the best value for money there was. It was between that and the 12 core. Now, the 12 core, I thought, is not that much of a step up over the eight, so I went for the 16. In addition to that, I didn't wanna go all the way up into the kind of faster, more core CPUs, just because it does drop a little bit on the single thread core score, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, the 16 core was absolutely perfect for me. Even with the 16 core, with what I do, I do max it out quite regularly. In fact, a lot of you guys say to me, why do you need 16 cores? Why do you need this? Why do you need that? If you want to see a video on exactly why I do need these specs, then I will do that. If you hit that thumbs up button, I get enough likes, I'll do a video on that exact subject for you. But a lot of the times with these things, it's not necessarily about what you need, it's about what you want. You know, I could walk or I could be more efficient and drive a car. It's not necessarily about what I need, it's just about what I want that makes me more efficient because time is the one thing that is of huge value to me. So anywhere I can save time is good. If I wanted to have an eight core, I could have an eight core, but then things take twice as long and I'm sitting around waiting. So anyway, I'll go into that video if you want me to, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and I'll do that video for you. I've also got 256 gigs of RAM, and then I've got the dual uh, 5700 GPUs from AMD. So I got rid of the RX 580. It's just not up to what I need it to be. And I've gone with the, the two uh, 5700 AMD cards. They're the actual original Apple ones, the MPX units. And the performance of them has been phenomenal for me, exactly what I needed. They've got a great number of ports on the back and obviously they don't have any spinning fans, which means that the noise and the calling is all as per Apple designed it to be and it stays nice and quiet, which is fantastic. Now, the QNAP boxes that I've got, I've got a TVS1282T and a TVS1282T3. And for all intensive purposes, they're identical. They're both i7, 64 gig of RAM but one of them is Thunderbolt 3, one of them is Thunderbolt 2. Now, actually, my Mac Pro is not connected to the QNAPs over Thunderbolt. It's connected over 10 gig Ethernet. My whole house now is 10 gig Ethernet. And the reason for that primarily is because the Thunderbolt 3 is limited to two meters and they're all the way 
over there. So it just wasn't really feasible to have them over Thunderbolt. 10 gig ethernet built directly into the Mac Pro and is super fast anyway. So I don't really need any more performance than that. And it just gives you that flexibility of where you put the actual devices themselves. For that little bit faster performance over the direct attached uh, storage, uh, I've got two T4 Cal Digit 32 terabyte boxes that I use in a RAID 0 that give me loads and loads of storage, super fast. They get backed up onto the more resilient QNAPs and that's kind of how my data flow goes. I've got the Blackjet card reader, which like I said, I did a video on a couple of days ago, which I absolutely love. I'm not quite decided on where I'm going to leave it yet. I think it makes things a little bit cluttered sitting on top of the Mac Pro, but we'll, we'll see. Now, in addition to that as well, a lot of people say to me, why have you got these white speakers when everything else is dark? The reason for it is that these speakers are actually not for this setup because some people say they're in the wrong direction. They're actually not. They're actually purely for that TV that I have over there. And the reason I keep them is because they are incredible. They're wave master speakers. I've had them for a few years. I did do a video on them and I just love the sound quality. I am gonna get in contact with Wavemaster and see if they can send me some black or gray ones and that will make everybody happy, but the sheer sound quality means that I just cannot get rid of them. So that leads on to the question of what speakers do I have on my Mac Pro? I've still got the Bose Companion Fives, I believe they are. These are the original ones, they're not the newer Mark II. I don't think there's that much of a difference, but to me, they are the best desktop speakers that you can buy. Bose, phenomenal sound quality, and they're absolutely tiny. They're literally these tiny little things that sit on either side of the desk. You can't even see them. And then I've got the big bass bin directly underneath, and on top of the bass bin, down underneath here, uh, I've got the two cow digit boxes as well. And I've also got the uh, cow digit uh, dock as well, the TS3 Pro or Plus, I think it is. So yeah, a completely comprehensive setup now. If you guys wanna see exact details of every single little thing and how I use it, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below. If I get enough, maybe you can persuade me into it. But that's it from me, a mini setup tour. I'm gonna to do a more comprehensive one if you guys want me to, but I thought I'd just give you a quick update. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks.